or the visa fee on H1 and L1 visas has now been hiked. That was a proposal at, as part of this omnibus spending bill. Joining us now is Mr. R. Chandrasekhar of NASCOM. Mr. Chandrasekhar, we spoke about this last night. We were anticipating this bill to go through, and that's exactly what's happened. It's your worst nightmare come true. Uh, yes, I think it's uh, uh, really unfortunate that uh, things have come to this pass. Uh, this is notwithstanding all the uh, uh, representations and all the uh, uh, messaging that has been done uh, to the U.S. government about how this will adversely impact our uh, relationship. And I think it is uh, uh, really distressing that this has happened. Uh, ignoring the even the prime minister's request, mm. and at a time when uh, the attempts are being made to build the bilateral uh, trade to 500 billion dollars from the current uh, levels within uh, the next uh, uh, three four years by 2020, at a time when uh, there is significant business in India that is being opened up to uh, U.S. companies at a time when I think there has been uh, collaboration on different uh, areas uh, uh, like on the uh, climate negotiations, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, I think at that time that the uh, U.S. has uh, dealt with these, uh, uh, you know, uh, representations and these uh, points that have been put across from India, and that they have just been brushed aside so lightly. I think that is certainly something which is a cause for very deep but concern, not only for the industry, but for, I believe for the country as well. You're, you're right that this is a matter of concern uh, for the two partners, but uh, are you also disappointed with the way that India and the Indian government has handled this, Mr. Chandrasekhar? Because let's be clear, we haven't really seen too much fuss being made about this issue from a government point of view. Yes, I definitely think that uh, that this is a matter which uh, uh, should have been taken up by, uh, strongly by the government. But I think given the fact that the uh, Commerce Minister had taken it up with her counterpart, the U.S. Commerce Secretary, and given the fact that the Prime Minister himself had spoken to the U.S. President on this issue, now these are not, uh, you know, the kind of uh, things which are routinely taken up uh, at that level. So I think that it would uh, perhaps uh, not be uh, fair or entirely accurate uh, to say that the, these uh, issues have not been taken up uh, by the government and have not been taken up strongly. But I think the fact that even though it was taken up at that level, even though it has been taken up at that level, those interventions have been brushed aside that is, I think, even more, uh, I would say, a matter of concern. And I believe that the government has to then, uh, you know, consider what it needs to do. Mm. What could be the options at this point, uh, sir, that we can explore in terms of recourse? Because this bill has gone through, which means that the decision or the proposal to hike the visa fee is now cleared by the U.S. Uh, 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 House. Uh, so what recourse can we now expect? Well, uh, you know, as you said, uh, this particular bill has been passed. The impact of this bill uh, has come to uh, pass. And uh, really it is, uh, I suppose, up to the government now to decide in terms of what the response should be. After all, it is the request that has been made not only by the industry but by the government at the highest level that has been uh, brushed aside. So I think that a response to this is something which uh, the government will uh, need to uh, uh, need to craft, and this is something which uh, I think we are certainly going to take it up very strongly with the uh, government once again. And, you know, the Commerce uh, Minister is currently in Nairobi, uh, uh, you know, discussing at the discussing our uh, our engagement at the WTO. Is this a matter that could be raised there? Well. Uh, as you know, the um, e, you know the issues re regarding immigration, typically in a technical sense, are not uh, subject matter yeah. of the WTO itself. WTO, exactly. But I think that I think that given that uh, 
you know, they are uh, all, all there at that uh, forum. I think the sidelines could be a place where some discussions could be held, but that would be more informal in nature. I mean, it would not uh, form a, you know, a part of any formal uh, negotiations. But then the fact is that this is done. This is already done. It has already come to pass. Yeah. The question is, what do we do about it? How do we respond to this? Uh, we believe that this is not a step which can go without a response. I, we mm. believe that when all these uh, objections have been raised, when we have brought it to the attention of the U.S. government at the highest level, from the highest level in India, and to legislators, that this is discriminatory, that this is irrational. We are, the, the industry is being asked to pay for a cause which has nothing to do with the industry. And if that was to be the, uh, you know, uh, something which is acceptable, it's like saying that, uh, you know, uh, companies from the U.S. in India should be asked to pay a premium for uh, some unrelated services. That's exactly how this uh, translates into. So these are, right, I think, Mr. questions which really have to be uh, you deliberated know, considered on. By the government. But you're saying that the, in the Indian government will need to respond and will need to uh, have a strong enough response to this. But Mr. Chandrasekhar, for the benefit of our viewers who are just joining in and who may not have been following this story, I know you told me last night that the implications of this proposed hike could cost the industry about $400 million. If you can explain the arithmetic to us once again on the implications of this move for Indian IT, sir. Yeah, well, uh, you know, uh, about uh, uh, five years ago, six years ago, uh, the, the Droga uh, uh, Act came into uh, being, under which uh, a fee was uh, imposed for uh, H-1B and L-1 visa. And that fee was of uh, $2,000 and $2,250, respectively. And the purpose of that fee was to raise money to enhance border security in the U.S. Uh, on their southern uh, border. Now, the point, uh, you know, some issue, some uh, expenditure relating to uh, border security. Now, what that has to do with visas being granted to professional technical personnel is something which I think uh, there is not even an attempt to justify the nexus. But the fact is that this was brought in, and it has been brought in in such a manner that it affects only certain Indian companies under the so-called 50-50 provision, which is where there are more than 50 employees and where the more than 50% of the employees are visa holders. The cumulative impact of those fees at that time was $100 million a, a year. Now, this uh, bill lapsed in 2014, September, uh, and then it was reintroduced, uh, or, you know, immediately after that for one more year for a different purpose, which was for uh, the health care for 9-11 victims. Uh, when that was uh, brought in, once again, you know, this concern was raised that why is this being brought in and now it has just become a funding, a special funding mechanism. We are not questioning the purpose for which it is being used. That is for the U.S. government to decide. But these are the kind of expenditures which any government has to meet. So why should a particular industry from a particular country, particularly in the area of tremendous importance to India, after all, the IT sector is important to India, and this particular sector and the industry only from India being singled out and only Indian companies being singled out, under this uh, uh, dispensation was uh, strongly objected to. Well, that one-year extension lapsed in September this year, and even as all this was going on, and even as all these representations were made, it has now been doubled, meaning that all the fees were doubled, 2,000 became 4,000, 2,250 mm -hmm. became 4,500. That means 100 million would go up to 200 million. And in addition to that, it was also made applicable not only for visa applications, but also for any uh, renewal of the visa. So that automatically right. further doubled the fee, which meant that 200 became 400 million. So this is half a billion dollar uh, uh, hit, yeah. literally, for the industry. This is uh, uh, not a small uh, impact. 
It is not a small impact. So we're talking about the IT company staring at a $400 million visa bill on account of the, uh, of the bill that's been cleared by the U.S. government today. But Mr. Chandrasekhar, uh, trying times for you. It's a triple whammy, so to speak. You've got this to deal with. You've got, of course, the impact of the Chennai floods that has hit the IT industry quite significantly as well. And, of course, uh, uh, the, the global uncertainty continues to weigh on sentiment. But appreciate you joining us and taking us through your reactions to a decision that's been just cleared by the U.S. Uh, Archandashrekar, the president of NASCOM. On that note, it is time for us to take stock of the week that.